Well, it's the time of year for fishing on Delmarva, but we're going to take a look at a more non-traditional method of catching fish, one that involves a bow, an arrow, and some line, and it's called bow fishing. Dusk is approaching as Adam Wilson and Paul Henry shove off into the Nanticoke River near Sharptown, Maryland. They're locked and loaded for a night of bow fishing, and tonight they will be targeting gar, a long cylindrical fish covered in diamond-shaped scales with a long snout full of sharp teeth, somewhat resembling an alligator. They have a real thick, it's almost like armor, scales on them. If, when you clean them, you actually have to use a pair of like 10 snips to get to get past them. They're long, pretty, pretty thin, have a real big teeth on them, a whole bunch of teeth. We'll show you in a little bit. <laughs> and thanks to their armor-plated scales, long-nosed gar have no major predators and are quite formidable fish. They lay motionless in the water waiting for a fish to pass by before putting those long jaws full of teeth to the test. Potentially growing to five to six feet in length, the long-nosed gar can be rather intimidating should you come upon one in the fresh and brackish tributaries they like to frequent throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed. I've had a few bite my boot before, but they, uh, they're they usually pretty docile once you get them in the boat and you can just take the air out of them. I usually put my foot over their jaw just to be safe, but. The time has finally come to power up the lights and head into the shallows. Bows are at the ready and it doesn't take long. Right there, look at that big fish. Yeah. Big female. That was quick. She was right there though, so if I had missed her, it would have been bad. Moving into the creek and we soon see one of the many benefits those armor-plated scales give the gar. Oh, there she is. I stuck her, but there it came out. The scales are like armor, went right off of them. <laughs> Cruising deeper into the creek, it's easy to be distracted by the scenery. It certainly looks like another world back here, but Adam and Paul have to stay focused because there are gar in these waters. One of these turns up here was where there was a ton of them. Not only are these waters filled with gar, we frequently see snakes, muskrats, and a huge school of something. First we think minnows, but now we're leaning towards recently spawned rockfish. The abundance of life in the waters of Delmarva is truly remarkable. Well, we are done with our second creek and we're gonna check out part of one more to see if there's anything in there or not. It seems like it's the the mouth of the creek and all the way up to the head. Ow! Oh, 
on down. Adam and Paul finish the evening with 16 gar and one carp. Fortunately for the gar, there were probably just as many misses and deflections thanks to that tough skin. Bring in a miss. Oh, you missed. My God. And we can't forget about those teeth. You can see why these fish are such awesome predators. Knowing they've been around since dinosaurs roamed the earth makes the long-nosed gar an even more impressive fish.